So, uh, okay, so since we're talking about legal cases and all that kind of fun stuff, let's talk about the Tracy Lords debacle because that was a big thing. And I remember that specifically um, when I was a little girl, you guys coming to me and one day sitting me down and saying, you know, mom and dad might be going to jail and here is the phone number for our lawyer and basically if the cops come and drag us away in the middle of the night, this is who you should call. And I remember being so confused because I couldn't comprehend like why my parents would go to jail and obviously I was too young for you guys to explain the whole situation to me. So tell me a little bit about the whole Tracy Lord story. You go ahead, Humphrey. She was hot stuff. She was a great model. She great was my model. favorite model. I she shot about 18 shoots on her. I shot her more than anybody. And she was a wonderful model. Yeah. And you would never have guessed she was underage. She was so promiscuous, so forward. Yeah, she, I mean, she, she even more so in real life than actually on film. I mean, she was so... She, I mean, she embarrassed Buck Henry when we had dinner with him once. I mean, she'd be under the table playing with him. She she'd played be footsy footsy with footsy him was, under the table. Yeah, she was, at the restaurant in Venice. He was acutely embarrassed. <laughs> he was shuffling in his seat and going red in the face, saying, "Buck, what's the matter?" <laughs> <laughs> no, she was very, very uh, forward. So you would never, never think that she was underage, and I. Those, the, the only good thing that happened out of that was it did make everybody really aware of birth certificates and uh, IDs and things like that. I was the only one who had an ID on her because I took her to England for a Lamb's Navy rum calendar and she had a passport and we, I had all, all the paperwork on her. So when this whole thing blew up, I was able to give other people her fake IDs. But um, but at least that verified the fact that she was falsifying her identity uh, and yeah. falsifying how old she was. Uh, yeah, and no. it wasn't that you guys were shooting somebody knowledgeably. No, no. Oh, God, no. I God, mean, no. who would do such a crazy thing? Yeah, you yeah. And ruin your life. The penalty is extraordinary. Well, it was at 25 years per S- offense, right? Something absolutely absurd like that. And, that. and per offense could be like per photo. And you guys shot thousands of pictures on it. Could be life. per frame of movie, it was explained to me. So you've got a million frames in a movie. That's insane. So you could go to jail forever. That's insane. Uh, so it when was you guys, so scary. So tell me about when you guys actually got the news, like what your reaction was, what you did, all of that. Well, I was reading the <laughs> Metro section of the LA Times and suddenly I saw a headline saying, uh, poor actress is underage. And I thought, oh, that's weird. Looked and it was Tracy. I nearly... Did something weird in my pants, I can tell you. <laughs> that was, the implications rushed in like a flood of terror, really. I had to break the news to Suze, and she laughed. I laughed. Yeah, I said, that's typical, Tracy. <laughs> I mean, I just thought that was so typical. But it wasn't until later I thought about it, and I wondered if she was the one who exposed the truth because we had to destroy every single picture we had of her. All it's those, so weird in the middle of the night. Ah, shoveling shredding. These, shoveling, shoveling huge kitchen trash bags full of, of uh, film into the car, taking them to em- what we looked for, empty dumpsters next to supermarkets so we could throw them at the bottom of the dumpster, dumping all these beautiful photographs. That's crazy. Dumpster. So she wiped her slate she, clean. I mean, I don't know. anyway. But she was still legal in Europe. So you can still get her picture uh, films. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because with the ages 16 in Europe? 16. Okay. She was such a fabulous model. I, and I was actually very fond of her. She's a great um, girl. But, you know, it just became very awkward, with the whole legal system. So we kind of didn't talk to each other anymore. So let me get this right. She used a false birth certificate to get a real driver's license. Is that yeah. is that right? So the ID that she presented you guys with was actually like a real government issued ID. Yes. She just got it under false pretenses. Yeah. 
Wow. That's, that's nuts. Yeah. I mean, we're so diligent about IDs now and paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Um, the adult industry is very careful about that. And I think that that very much stems from the Tracy Lord scandal. That's, that's, (laughs) that's nuts. It was scary though. Let's um let's get into that story because that's a big one and that was thing that actually affected me as well um, because I was about seven years old when that whole scandal hit. So can you tell us about who Tracy Lords was and what the specific scandal was because some people don't know. Tracy Lords was brought to me by a guy something Rogers was his name. Mm. And this was back when I used to close at nine at night, mm-hmm. so it was dark. Uh, he brought Tracy in and told me um, she wanted to get into the business. I sent her in the other room to get undressed. Uh, he said she'll end up doing porno. She knows who Ron Jeremy is, and she knows this, and she knows that. And I said, okay. I said, let me get some pictures of her. Got the pictures, was really impressed with her a lot. Saw her ID. She really had real ID. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how easy it was for a girl to get fake ID back then. Mm -hmm. All you'd have to do is walk into DMV, hand them your birth certificate with no picture, Mm -hmm. and tell them you need an ID made. They would make you an ID. That's that's a crucial detail that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. It's not like she was walking around with a fake ID that she got made in like right. downtown. Right. She went to the government office, mm-hmm. gave them a false birth certificate because which like you said had no picture to go with it. So of course, you couldn't verify for sure it was that person and she got a real ID. So when she came to people like you and everybody else who shot her um underage, because that's kind of what we're getting to. Turns out she was underage. Um, she had a real ID. So how on earth were you supposed to know that she was underage? Because from all accounts of purposes, from everybody I've spoken to, she was so far beyond her years, just looks wise, the way she behaved. You'd have never guessed in a million years yeah. ever right. that she was that she was underage. Yeah. And this, the worst, the dumbest thing I ever did when I let my Irish temper overcome everything else mm-hmm. is the guy, the investigator from the federal people uh, said, why didn't you contact her high school? I said, you're an idiot. He said, what'd you say to me? I said, you're an idiot. I said, that's not even her name. <laughs> that girl that she got the ID from is of age. Had I called the school they both went to, right. they would have said she's of age. Right. So how did you hear that she was underage? Uh, Seuss Randall. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Seuss had called me or come by. I think she called me and said she's hearing rumors Tracy's underage. And I started laughing. How can a girl be underage that looks like this girl? Right. I mean, she looked 20. Yeah. And then you knew it was real when... They busted me. So you had a bunch of cops come in your office, right? I did. And they came in and said, you were highly recommended by Reb at Pretty Girl International. And this is your that rival. we should come by. And they arrested me. So I remember that incident quite clearly, actually myself, because I was... I think somewhere I should get my dates right. I should find out exactly when the date of this was and then get my age right. Cause I, in my head, I was like seven, but I was probably more like 10. And I remember my parents sat me down because they thought they were going to go to jail, you know, and normally the Mm -hmm. cops come when they often arrest you. If they're going to arrest you at home, they arrest you in the early morning hours when they know you're home and they like drag you out of bed. And it's very dramatic. And that's what they thought was going to happen to them. Mm. And since I was the oldest, they needed me to understand what might happen and what to do if that happened. So they sat me down and they were like, look, like the cops might come and take mommy and daddy away to jail. Mm. And if this happens, here are some phone numbers that you need to call and don't worry, it's going to be okay. Take care of your little brother. And I just remember thinking, why would my parents go to jail like you, and they you couldn't were seven or eight yeah i was i was wow. very young wow. and um and 
you know, of course they couldn't tell me exactly what was going on. Right. I was too young to be explained the situation. But I remember that very clearly because Tracy was a good friend of my mom's actually. Mm. Um, she came to like my birthday party. I remember there was a pair of, I think, angel wings that she gave me that like, no, it was a ballerina costume that I wore all the time. Mm. And uh, my mom was close to her. And so that news affected them very much. And they, you know, obviously were in a state of huge panic because they, my mom had shot more on Tracy than almost anyone. Mm -hmm. And so they took all their slides, all their chromes, because remember this is back before the internet, back right. before digital, and they piled them in the car and they drove around Los Angeles in a panic, throwing them into various dumpsters in the back of supermarkets, wow. like underneath other trash. It's similar to something I did. Yeah. To get rid of applications and stuff. Mm -hmm. To one trash can do another. Yeah. In fact, when I threw away all those 8 by 10s 11 by 14s and the other stuff, when I end up uh, having that together, that's exactly what I did to get try to get rid of some of it. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.